I like to peek at Peter's. This is a clip from the Dark Star Rising podcast and show. To check out the full show, go to rumble.com slash darkstarrising or check out the podcast on any podcast network. It is available. Welcome to the Dark Star Rising podcast and show. This is Bamga. Say hello. Hello, guys. And Jaga. Those are our nicknames. And today is another day where we look into different kinds of scams. I didn't want to do this one. Because I was like, ah, we already covered some of these scams, but there are more scams. And I ultimately got motivated by our theme song. If you don't like that theme song, get used to it. Um, let's see here. What is... What is... All right. Well, okay. All right. So, there's basically two kind of scams. I mean, obviously, there's probably way more than that kind of scams. My point is just... Uh, I'm going to be focusing on two different kinds of scams. There's the uh, quick scam and the long scam. I mean, I don't know what else to call them, to be honest. Um, basically, the uh, the simple con man scam, you know, and the long scam. Now, the simple con man scam is basically. You don't want to meet these people you're scamming ever again. You don't want them to know that you exist after their encounter. It's a one-hit shot, one-time scam. You want new email addresses, so on and so forth. And then the long scam, we're going to go into that. So there's this guy back in the age of time before who um, repeatedly sold the Brooklyn Bridge to tourists and the like. Okay, so people would come and be like, oh, this is a cool bridge. And he's like, yeah, hey, man, I own the bridge. I've got a piece of paper, which is a license. I'm willing to sell the bridge to you. And maybe you get all the toll fees or something. Like, you get money from it somehow, residually, maybe, because people drive through it. And you can own the Brooklyn Bridge. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the Brooklyn Bridge is probably owned by the state of New York. So you can't really sell it. And the state would, of course, not sell it. Here's this guy. This is what he looks like. George C. Parker, or James O'Brien, or Warden Kennedy. He was a con artist, con man. Con stands for confidence. You have to have confidence to be this first type of scammer, for sure. And most most scammers have to have confidence to get to actually convince people to give them their money. Notably, the Brooklyn Bridge and other national landmarks usually to unwarily new arrived immigrants. So, tourists, I thought, but. Probably some tourists as well there. Um, so newly arrived immigrants are like, I've got the money that I, t yeah, you know, people always think of newly arrived immigrants as being super poor. But no, they had to have money to pay for the, the, the boat or the airplane. Or in many cases, nowadays, the people who can pay to get into the caravans to go up through the walls and whatever, you know, through the north, south, uh, they're actually quite, pretty wealthy in their um, country comparatively. And so, like, they'll fly over from Africa or some other country as wealthy people and then walk up the South Mexico border, right? And these people actually, maybe not by American standards, but by their own country standards, fairly wealthy. So he's like, hey, you got a $10 bill or, well, back then, maybe let's say, I'll sell the New York Bridge for $2. And that's like their entire life savings or something. Or maybe it's like a tenth of their life saving you know and 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 they're all like well that would be cool and you, you get you probably get to get some residuals from the brooklyn bridge so he would sell the brooklyn bridge repeatedly to people you know different people and give them like a, a piece of paper that said that they own the brooklyn bridge now he ended up doing like 10 or more years in prison which is kind of sad because this guy's a complete savage i mean Yes, con men are horrible people, rah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But this guy's a complete savage. I mean, if you're stupid enough to believe that an individual can sell you the entire bridge that everybody needs to use, and he's just going to walk up to you on the street, you're probably low-hanging fruit who needs to learn, you know, not to be so gullible. I, had to, I learned how to not be so gullible over time period, 
and you got it too, basically. So that's what this, you know, the quick, short, short, uh, what do we call it? The Zappa scam, you know, the first scam. The second scam, here's this guy, the man who sold the Brooklyn Bridge. Photo credit. Uh, Google, uh, everyone has heard about the expression. If you believe that, I have a bridge in you. If you believe that, I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. No, I've not heard of that. I don't think ever. The point, the mo what most people didn't know is that there was a man who sold the Brooklyn. That's where it came from, probably. And, um, so this is the... This is the street scam. You know, this is the scam, the email scam. This is the scam that is like, real quick, get your money. I am a Nigerian prince, or I have all the money from a Nigerian prince. Just give me your bank account details and your login, and I'll, you know, hold, give you some to hold. Right? And now we go into, because I, I basically this is not the focus, but this is pretty obvious. What you can you can you can you can see these. These are easy to catch. Most people who aren't objectively stupid don't fall for these, and those who are really gullible usually learn over time that these things are in fact very obviously scams. The one though that works for everyone just about is the long scam. And that's what we're going to be focusing in on today, because the long scam, the long con, as I call it, is no joke, okay? The long con can fool entire institutions. The long con can get people to say, in the name of science, give us your money. The long con is the con that is quite, and, and this is... And this is the two different techniques. This is why I kind of almost like the scammers who get away. I mean, because of their, you know, not like, obviously, they're, they're horrible. You know, it's just, they're per it's just like, it takes a savage to have the confidence and to sell people hope and get away with it. It just sounds kind of cool. Obviously, I wouldn't fall this, for those kind of scams. And if I did, I'd probably be really mad. But the point is... You do have to punish them somehow, otherwise they keep scanning, right? So, scamming. But, like, you know, if you're going to... It's, calm, it's almost like, you know, you deserve it if they're that stupid, you know? You know, maybe they need to learn a lesson. Still, you know, don't don't scam people short scam because... Um, it's, it's, it's like in the world of just, like, survival... It makes sense, and it's it's like you know, well, if you get short scammed, sh scam the short scammer back, right? And um, I'm gonna call it the hope scam because basically it's it's, it's strategy is scamming people based off of hope. So you want the Brooklyn Bridge? It can give you hope. I'll sell it to you. So you're basically this guy is selling hope. Be careful when people sell hope. The other thing, the interesting thing about the the long con. Is it's exactly the opposite. It's much longer, and instead of selling people hope, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Okay, there's a story that I made up off the top of my head one day, which is basically historical. Um, there's a little village. Okay, a little village in this corner of this box here, this this place here. This this little village is called. I mean, it's really. It's really meaningless its name, but basically it's a little village of wheat farmers and and cow farmers in ancient Mesopotamia. Okay, now there's this big city over here. We'll call it. And we're gonna make it up. What? Wait, wait, you let me? We're yeah. It, so we're just gonna call it Erstein. Yes, Erstein. You know that's that's it's a city, the city of Erstein in Mesopotamia. Right? And there's the mountain of Ugu, okay? And that it's said that the mountain of Ugu is where the gods lived, right above it. And Erstein okay, is a city, and there's barbarians over here that occasionally raid through the, you know. Um, but anyways, this guy shows up one day at this friendly little village where, where they farm wheat and cows whatever cows they had, you know, 
Um, and maybe some goats, maybe instead of cows, but no, not goats, specifically wheat and cows. Um, this guy shows up and he's like, hey, what's up? And the villagers come out to meet this new foreigner, this alien, this guy from another land. I mean, they've seen people pass before from Erstein, but like, um, they try to stay away from outsiders. I mean, outsiders stay away from their village, and, and so, but they're curious, for sure. You know, they, they don't really like the inhabitants of Erstein, but they don't usually come by, and the barbarians don't come by very much, and still much. They basically just give them some wheat and cows, and the barbarians leave them alone. But the Erstein, this guy comes and he says, The gods are coming! The gods are coming! The gods are coming! We all need to die! And they say, hey, hey, slow down there, son. I know we all speak this ancient language with cuneiform for the writing in Mesopotamia, and, and we understand what you're saying, but slow down there. Hold on. Explain this to us in great detail. So he sits down. I need some food, though. I'm starving. I've, I've traveled long away from the mountain of the gods, and the gods the gods are coming. Okay. So they give him some bread because the reed farmers. So that's what they have. And they also have some meat. And he's like, ah, this is terrible. Can you give me something better? So they gave him some fresh cooked beef. He's like, it's tough as shit. Okay. Now that I complain about your hospitality, I'll tell you. The guys are coming! Please, don't yell. Just tell us the story, what you say. Okay, I was just on the mountain, and I heard the god Pupilu talking to the goddess Fifi that they're going to invade. And and that the way that they, they do this is they're going to make the whole mountain explode off the top, and fire and brimstone Lava and magna will come and destroy us all because we forgot them. Now these people, these villagers, are not the brightest. They're a little gullible. And they've heard of the gods before and that the gods were probably on Mount... What was the mountain called? Ugu, right. And so they were starting to get worried. He spread this throughout the whole village, and eventually they're like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to stop the, everybody's, the elders and everybody's like, blah, 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 blah. And all the elders are like, we got to sacrifice something to the gods. And, and one elder's like, no, no, this is, this is a joke, guys. This guy's just a fucking scam artist. I mean, come on. And they just shoved that guy into the ditch because he was old, and they just left him there. And then this guy here is like, yes, I must sacrifice to the gods a sacrifice worthy of the gods not coming down and they're like okay we've, we've got cows and we got wheat cows won't do your meat is tough and bleh. wheat you can't sacrifice you know what happened to the last guy who sacrificed vegetables to god or a god or whatever like he got mad and killed his brother or something like that's like isn't that no no we gotta sacrifice goat from the city that's the only thing that's going to appease the gods and save you. I mean, save us. Well, we don't have goat from the city. Right, right. Give me money and I'll go buy the goat, dumbasses. I mean, come on. I'm here to save you. I'm here. It's an existential crisis. I'm here to save you. Okay. Well, we don't have any of the gold coins that the, the, the village uses. I mean, the city uses Erstein. All right. Well, uh, do you have something to trade for the gold coins in the city? Yes, we have wheat and cows. All right. So they loaded up a cart. And guess who, get, guess who got to ride on top of that cart while the villagers, since they don't have any horses, pulled the cart? Yes, it was the guy from the mountain. So the guy from the mountain and the guys with the cart, they have this cart here. Thank you for checking out this clip of the Dark Star Rising podcast and show. Now rub my belly filthy you, you man. <laughs>